In the twilight years of the Han Dynasty, chaos and rebellion defined the land. Dong Zhou has had a long military career in the northwestern part of China. Stationed permanently in the frontier with his men, he was called to the capital by the half-brother of the Empress Dowager, Wei Zhen, to help him kill the corrupt eunuchs that controlled the imperial court. When he arrived, he found the capital in chaos as Wei Zhen was assassinated by the eunuchs. Quickly, he took control of the emperor and would later depose him, installing his younger brother, Emperor Shi Yan, as his own puppet ruler. He would also move the capital of the Han Dynasty from Luoyang over to Chang'an. He would leave the former in a wake of destruction. Lu Bu wasn't far from his master's side, delivering to him his commander's head in the wake of the confusion at Luoyang. They swore to be his father and son. Lu Bu was a masterful warrior, nicknamed the Flying General. Unmatched, fearless, and mighty, Lu Bu spearheads Dong Zhou's campaign to reunite China through terror and fear. The Age of Chaos has begun. I'm playing the fearsome warlord Dong Zhuo. My goal during this campaign in the beginning stages is to consolidate my power to the west and the northwest. If I can do that, then I can focus all of my power on the east. As you can see, it's a campaign where everyone wants to kill me. I will be quite cruel. Any events that pop up, I'll probably choose something that will end up killing someone. I'm playing as Dong Zhuo, so I feel like I need to play according to the character. We have a few unique features over here. Minus one to mustering turns, meaning that when I recruit a unit, it'll take less time for that unit to come to full strength. And minus 10 morale for defending enemy forces. Whenever I attack, they're going to be in trouble. That means I need to go on the offensive quite a bit. And if I do so, they will break. I've got some unique features over here too. I've got a standard and heavy variant of my Shiliang cavalry. And over here I have a unique building where I'm able to enforce conscription meaning that my units will be even better when they're first recruited and it will take less time for them to muster. For occupying a location, I can burn it to the ground in order to increase my intimidation. If I do so and I want to rebuild it, it will cost a lot of money. For diplomacy, I have coerce, which increases a chance of another target of mine taking a deal and I'm able to use my, my intimidation for that role. As I said before, I've got two unique characters, Lu Bu and Zhang Liao. We will go over their stories a bit whenever we're in the game, but now we are ready. We're playing on the romance game mode, playing on the very hard difficulty, and we shall now begin. Luo Yang burns, my lord, by your command. It was unavoidable. It was the beating heart of treason. Those traitors still rise against you, and they have convinced the people of your guilt. There can be no mercy for traitors. Cao Cao is most capable, but his ambition will destroy him. Yuran Chao may lead this coalition, but he lacks the resolve to oppose me. I will utterly crush him. Dao Jian remains an ally. But he speaks in vagaries. He is weak-willed. I do not trust him or any of them to honor any oaths to me. I will burn them all as I burn their precious capital. You act in defense of the Emperor, my lord. Let none stand against your fury. Establish your power. Lord Dong Zhuo, you were wise to move west, protecting the emperor from these traitors. Their coalition is all but spent now. They will face imperial justice in time, but first you must secure your position. Chang'an is well protected, but you must expand, crushing to send wherever it occurs. Although there are warlords still loyal to you and the Han, you must ensure their fealty never wavers. All traitors must be put to the sword. Mission issued. Spurned before, Dong Zhuo seeks to dominate. You must shore up the power of the Emperor and consolidate Han territory, even if you must take control of matters personally. 
seized this region from its previous owners, reminding them that in a sense of leadership and worse, treason will forfeit so much more than just their land. If I take on Ding, or at least the toolmaker in on Ding, I'll gain plus 5 to my public order and plus 25 to my faction support. Blue Boo is very close by. We'll go over his ordeal in just a minute. We have new ancillaries gained. A stone statue of Confucius giving more satisfaction, more morale for melee cav, and more instinct. Not bad. A jade horseman for more satisfaction too. And armor. A hardened iron shell. Expertise will go down, but we'll get more resolve. Our melee attack rate will go down and speed, but our charge bonus will go up. Interesting. I probably won't use it, but who knows. Let's go over here now to my faction summary. Dong Zhuo does not have a typical ranking system like other warlords. He begins as a Chancellor of State, eventually you'll become a Grand Master, and later a King, one day the Emperor. If we look at the map right now, every enemy that we have is over to the east outside of Gongdu, or even an enemy down here in the form of the Yellow Turban Rebellion. The Bandit Queen is pretty close by. She's very powerful too, we'll have to worry about her. She's right over here somewhere, or at least that's where she'll be. So my goal is to try to unify everything over here in the Northwest. If I'm able to do that, then I'll have a great base of operations where I won't have to worry about anyone hitting me from behind. So no matter what is lost over in the East, I will continue to hit over in the West. Eventually, there will be infighting over in the east, and other factions will fight a war that will not involve me. The only location where I could imagine they would try to strike at would be the trade port of Luoyang. The actual capital of Luoyang was burned down by me. Okay, let's go back down now. I've got quite a bit of money. I can only build one building at a time in each commandery. I've got a farm laborer camp providing more food production and income from peasantry. We look down here, we have our ancient capital providing more prestige, more population growth, and public order. We have average fertility, and that is really all that I need to know for right now. Which means I probably want to build something to make a bit more money. I could build enforced conscription. If I do that, we'll be able to quickly recruit more units. I think I want to build my unique building chain for right now. While I do that, let's get rid of a few horsemen. I don't really want all of you here. Li Ju, you can go back. Niu Fu, and we'll see. You two get along quite well. You two could stay together. I'm trying to make sure everyone gets along, but it won't really be likely in my faction. We can't recruit anyone new until later. These two are rather satisfied. They'll be okay for now. And they're not really that important to me. Let's go over here to Diplomacy. Would anyone like to trade right now? Ma Ting? Sure, maybe one day. Han Empire. Now here's where we can make some money. They want 1,500 coins. No way. Maybe if I spend my money first, they won't want to take my money away from me because I won't have much left. Okay, we need to issue an assignment to our commandery. We should probably pick up Dong Zhuo. If I pick up Dong Zhuo, I could either get a lot of replenishment, or I could decrease my mustering time. I think for now, I would like to decrease my mustering time. Lu Bu needs a larger army. Well, actually, he doesn't. <laughs> and over here in Chang'an, who will I hire? It really depends. We do have Jade Pits making quite a bit of money for commerce and industry. You would make more money for peasantry, Dongmin, my younger brother. When I really look at it, I think I like the idea of making or getting more food. But I want to hire Shu Rong into my army and maybe even Jia Shu. So instead, I think for now, to increase the income for my commerce, I'm going to hire Li Ru. There we go. He has a new position. Then we can come over here to the court. Lu Bu does not like Dongmin. Dong Min will not always be my heir. Maybe one day Lu Bu will be my heir. But who should we hire? 
My wife likes Lu Bu and Dong Min. We'll make her my grand excellency for right now. She'll manage the affairs of my treasury and oversees development projects in my commanderies. Very good. Zhang Liao, you can become my counselor. You don't like my wife, but that should be fine. You'll be much happier for it. For my administrators, let's see here. Shu Rong, you won't gain any satisfaction, nor will any other character. No, they will not. But Shu Rong, I will make you one of my administrators anyway. In every position, we get effects. For one administrator, we get plus one to available armies, plus 15% income from all sources whenever they administer a commandery. But from his own personal effects, we get plus 10% income from commerce, and over here, plus 3k population growth. You can govern over Chang'an for now. One day I'll have you lead a force. Jia Shu, you can govern over another location as well. That will be on Ning. There we go. For my family tree, I have my younger brother right over here as my heir. Eventually, I'm sure we'll have children. Lu Bu is my adopted child, not my biological child. And I've gone over most of what we need to worry about for right now. Now it's time to go into battle. Right after I give a few items out. Okay, for you, Lu Bu, what should you have? You do have horsemen. I'm going to give you that stone statue of Confucius. Enjoy. There we go. And for Zhang Liao, what will I give him? More instinct or more expertise. He doesn't have a lot of expertise, which means he doesn't have a lot of melee evasion. For instinct, he would gain more melee damage. I'm going to give him that. Here's a Jade Horseman. Enjoy. Now these two are much happier. They're like, hey, our faction is really not too bad. I won't be able to get a reform until later. And I don't want to hire a spy right now. Again, my goal is to take power over here. Maybe a few other factions will want a peace treaty later on, but that could be difficult to test out. Now, Kill let's go to on Ding. They wasted it. Time to fight a night battle. It'll decrease their morale too. Oh, they're going to be in trouble. Our battle is now beginning. Lu Bu began his career as the master of records under Ding Yuan. Eventually, he would betray his master by killing him, and he would later join Dong Zhao. Zheng Liao was a fellow who served under Ding Yuan as well, and he was ordered to recruit soldiers for the commander-in-chief Wei Jin. When he came back to the capital of Luoyang with over 1,000 men under his command, he found the capital in chaos, and would then join Dong Zhao. One day we'll let him join our family. Lu Bu is known to be one of the finest warriors of the era. And I'm going to show you that by letting him take on this garrison on his own. Trust me, it's not indicative of future battles. In future battles, if he fights alone, he'll be defeated. But here, we can let him fight and destroy a bunch of peasantry. The Yellow Terran Rebellion was made up of peasantry. And that is why we'll be able to destroy them. Now Lu Bu is on his way, charging in alone. You can see that my army is being held in reserve. I wanted to use my flaming arrows to destroy their towers, but now we can let Lu Bu charge in. And Lu Bu alone will be able to destroy this garrison. The idea is that I can serve my army for future battles. We have many enemies to take down, and Lu Bu on his own will be able to destroy them all. He's charging in already. And you can see that the guy is not fearful. He's not worried. If I sent in Zhang Liao, he wouldn't be able to kill nearly as many soldiers. But Lu Bu, he's able to kill many. He'll continue to charge in. My enemies have many light infantry and archers too. If they had nothing but halberds, I would be worried or other types of medium infantry. But right now, he's knocking down many warriors. It reminds me of the movies Red Cliff Parts 1 and 2. Right now, Lu Bu is going to have a fun, fun time destroying many lives today. He might not be the best administrator in the world, 
but he is a warrior without true equal. Who wouldn't want to fight Lu Bu? He's on his red hair steed, and he's a might that no one can dis can really dispute right now. There's another major attack. He breaks the ground, he breaks the earth, and continues to break more enemies. Lu Bu begins in your campaign at rank 7. If you can imagine how powerful that is. Oh, it's very powerful. The guy is no joke. But because you begin with nearly every faction on the map hating you, <laughs> you've got to have some manner of powerful warrior. And Lu Bu fits that role. He's continuing to ride them down. The Yellow Turban Rebellion is really not sufficient when it comes to destroying what we have here. More riders are moving in. He's already knocked down more. Another one is dead. And another one. Lu Bu is having a great time right now. He's showing no mercy. He's destroying them all. And now we're charging in to destroy even more units. The archers over here are a threat. A threat that won't be here for much longer. They're grouped up, which is a very foolish choice because Lu Bu is able to do that. And you can see now that many have died. If we take a more strategic look at the battlefield right now, you can see that they're not really able to do much. They have no true officer to take on Lu Bu. Again, he's a warrior without equal. There's a tell of Zhang Fei, who serves under Liu Bei, that he was able to hold off a bridge on his own, holding off over 10,000 enemies. Not that we'll be able to do that in here, but I'm just letting you know that in the romance novelization of this time period, things get rather fantastical, and that is why Lu Bu is able to fend off so many on his own. But our future battles, we'll have to use our entire army all together. As I said before, I wanted to show you how powerful Lu Bu is, and the guy is able to kill so many. They're not able to do very much against him. My archers can move in, but what's incredible to me is how many he killed over here. Dozens of bodies lie on the battlefield. Imagine being a fellow where you could end that many lives. It's got to be awful in some ways. Do not relent. You have any manner of conscience. Right now he's chasing after those who can't hold up. Because he moves so quickly, he's just able to chop right through them, cut right through them. He's already killed quite a few, but he's killing so many more with every strike. They keep running away from him, but they can't get away from him. That's got to be a bad feeling. You can see he's taking minimal damage, though he's very tired. He's charging into another enemy force right now. And already he's killed dozens more. Very few are able to clamber and hang on to life. So now more enemies are clinging on. But as you can see, many are already dead. We can see how beautiful the maps are too. There's so much more to them than there were before. These are beautiful locations. We're only in the northwestern part of China right now. Let's go back to our toolmaker workshop right now. You can see what's over here. Very few foes who remain. Pretty soon they will all break and Lubu Oken was able to take on a garrison on his own. While it might not be the norm, I want to relish in the fact that we were able to do that. Do not relent. You can see that they're having a really bad time now. Lu Bu is a monstrosity. He's a fellow who likes to drink, he likes to party, he likes to fight. Leading is not really his forte. Of course, he'll be in position to lead, but he's very, he's not very good at it. Here comes some more enemies. But we've now won the battle. Lu Bu has done it. He'll continue to ride down more foes, but the battle is now over. We have taken the tool maker of Von Ding. I wanted that battle to be indicative of the power of Lu Bu. Once we fight a more organized army, it won't be nearly as easy. But he was able to kill over 1,000 people on his own. He's Lu Bu. We're now going to loot and occupy. I'm not just going to occupy, I'm playing Dong Zhuo. This 
settlement will make recompense. One mission completed. Glorious victory. Every traitor who opposes me will be destroyed. I cannot brook any resistance. What I do, I do to keep order. Now Dong Zhuo has more experience. We have another mission too. Dong Zhuo looks to build on his successes. The Emperor listens to you, my lord, and you have such designs for this empire. The infrastructure across the realm must be bolstered, and there is no greater time than now to begin construction. Let the timbers rise, my lord, and your vision be realized. If I construct or upgrade any building, it'll be cheaper for me to build more buildings for three turns, and it'll take one less turn to do so. Bring me news. I also wanted to save my soldiers for future fights. We don't have a lot, not in the very beginning. The first battle is meant to be the easiest one. For my commanderies, what can I pick up now? Over in Anding, we have a rural administration office, decreasing our public order by eight. Then we get money. I don't want to decrease my public order by eight. And why don't we repair our toolmaker now? There we go. Anjong, let's build up that Silk Road trading post. It'll give me more income. If you take that, it'll be done in three turns total. I can't build anything else right now. Our intimidation is currently going up. And now we can end our turn. Our goal is to move over here to destroy Gong Du. Gong Du has got to go. I might even go after Zhang Lu. Either way, they've got to die. Then later, I'll come up to the north and rebuild whatever I can. It'll cost me a lot of money to do so. The Bandit Queen is over to the east. I do worry about her as well. But we'll try to rush and destroy whatever we can. Another mission completed. Construct or upgrade a building. We've done so now. Another mission issued. As traders fall, Dong Zhuo looks to his own future. So long as there are enemies of the Empire, there will be a need to combat them. To that end, more men must be recruited to fight the wars you leave. Muster the strength of the Empire's willing people and see to the traders who stand brazenly in defiance of the Emperor's heavenly will. I've got to recruit two more units, then I'll get a benefit for three turns total, getting more experience per season, and more replenishment too. Thankfully, I didn't lose too many. Ma Ting is loyal, but the only issue in my view is that he won't ally me directly. Let's have a look. Who would like to ally? A non-aggression pact? What about a trade agreement? The Han Empire would like to trade. I was hoping to avoid spending too much money. Let's go over here and upgrade one of my commanderies. Chang'an. We can upgrade our conscription office or our jade pits into a jade craftsman location. Let's do that instead. There goes a lot of my money. I'll be able to expand my army. And for you, Lu Bu, why don't we destroy Han Sui early on? If I do that, I'll be much more powerful. Let's march on over. Or at least we can get the livestock farm of Anding. We can annex it for 2,000 coins. Over here in Anding, what do we want to pick up? We have a large town for right now. Only 25,000 people live here. Many of our locations are not under our control. Which means for right now... Why don't we focus on more food production? We'll provide govern, government support. Here's a drifter farming camp. More food production, up by 25%. More income from our peasantry. And military buildings will be cheaper to build. Faction developments, many capitals have moved. Character developments, right. You've moved back home. I've got an army back home as well. I could move them over to Luoyang, the trade port. That's actually a decent idea. If I have Lu Bu striking out, I'll let him move over here to the east. I still have a lot of money. So in one turn, we'll go take that livestock farm. And again, who would like to trade? Let's find out. The Han Empire would. Well met, friend. They want 227 coins per turn for 10 turns. I can do that. We accept your offer. I gain more from that trade agreement anyway. We can have another trade agreement. Liu you Biao, you're far off, but would you like to trade? You would too. You know what? We, we can do that. Agreement. I'll pay you for 10 turns. I can have one more trade agreement. 
Happy sheep. What about you? Yes, yes. Talk. 205 for 10 turns. As Let's do wish. it. Now I have a lot more money coming in. I can't form a coalition. I can't form an alliance. I cannot really support anyone. There's not a lot I can do when it comes to diplomacy. I've kind of burned down a few bridges. So let's get ready for a new fight very soon. Yuan Chu has declared war on the Yellow Terror Rebellion. Good luck, my friend. Han Sui has left the Alliance of Ma Ting, which works to my benefit, not to his. Wang Zhu has demanded a guarantee of autonomy from Liu Biao. Well, I don't know what will happen. Let's come over here to An Ding. Because I control the Han Empire, I can integrate these factions into my cause. There we go. It didn't cost as much as I thought it would. That's good to know. I thought it would cost me a lot, but I was wrong about that. Xu Rong, I think I want you to come join me, but you do not like Lu Bu. Either way, I want you to come join me. I think he'll be okay. We need more infantry, and because we have a few things going on here to increase our replenishment, it won't take nearly as long. Let's take up more G militia. We can counter enemy mounted units with that. For Zheng Liao, let's take up one group of Jian sword guards. These are medium sword infantry units. Not bad at all. I have 2400 coins coming in per turn. People are relatively happy for right now. That could change in time, but for now, they are relatively happy. If we go look at my court real quick. Everyone is doing fine. I'll hire more people in the future. Xu Rong is really not a bad commander. He's 41 years old. My okay, Lord. after that, can we can start? take Jin Qing, the silk trader. Then later, the small city as well. If I do so, I'll have much more money and much more power. Ma Ting does not have a lot, but Gong Du will eventually take Wu Du, the small town. Maybe one day he'll join me. Gong Zhao, I'll lose... Well, I won't lose him. But if I choose to let a maid join my court, I could lose him. I'm not going to let that happen. Another mission completed. As traders fall, Dong Zhuo looks to his own future, growing might. Not bad. Another mission issued from each according to their ability. My lord, the generals under your command are talented individuals, each with an array of skills that they can put to use in improving your realm. In each commandery, they can be sent on assignments to oversee and improve the infrastructure, both military and civic, of your lands. Each character has different qualities to bring to these endeavors, so inspect your options carefully. I need to send any character on assignment. If I do so, my intimidation will go up by plus one for three turns. It's a small amount. We have many characters in my court right now. I won't hire any of them. I've got to save my money up. I've completed one building, a faction development. The Yellow Turban Rebellion has changed up their capital. And over here, Sun Jian is trying to ambush someone, but he's very far from me, so I'm not worried about him either. Now, Lu Bu. Let's come over here. We can still recruit more. I would like to. Let's take up more Jian sword guards. Not bad. Let's have a look. I've got one army heading over to Luoyang, the Trust trade board. Let the horse they can wait Naka. right over here. If I upgrade it, it'll have a larger garrison, and I've got to send out someone on assignment. What about my capital? Well, that would be more income from the peasantry. I think for now, what I'll do, I'll send out my wife. There we go. That mission will be completed. I still have some money, and we need to pick up a reform. I would love to get more replenishment early on, but to try to rush for it would be kind of interesting and difficult. As you can see, I need a lot of technology in order to get to it. So what should I pick up for right now? Another trade agreement would be great. More population growth. Another building as well. More military supplies. I suppose for now we can focus on regional commissioners and actually try to get towards my replenishment rate. We already have slave mobilization. 
You shall be put to work. After all, it is your penance to serve. And because I have that, we're able to get axe bands too. They're good at charging. They're a good offensive unit. So pretty soon, Lu Bu will be able to go after Jin Qing. I'm trying to keep my power all together. And again, I would like to conquer anything over to the west. Unding, what do you need? Why don't we upgrade our livestock farm into, or my livestock corral into a livestock farm? It gives me a much bigger garrison. We get more food production and income. We'll take it. It'll only take me one turn to build it. Now we're ready for a new turn, but let's go look at diplomacy real quick. I've got to check every so often. Nope, nothing. Again, as I told you before, many do not want a treaty with Dong Zhuo. Dong Zhuo moves to finally make China safe. The commandery must inevitably fall to you as well. Minor warlords hold on to nominal power and doubtless plot against both you and the emperor. There would be treason must be met with merciless still. You must march at once. I need to hold one more location, then my intimidation will grow again. Now, it's time for me to fight another faction. I wonder, can I reach their town in one turn? If I cannot, then we can wait. No, I can reach them. Let's do it now. Sure, people might be angry with me, but I don't really care that much. I'm Dong Zhuo. If I was any other faction, it would be different. Before we kill them, let's try to starve them out for just a minute. No, I'm not going to wait it out. I'm going to fight. But before I do that, I need to look at other things here. I've gained a clay cup. It'll give more satisfaction to whoever. What about you, Shurong? I could give you a new weapon. I like what you have for right now, but I feel like you should hit harder in combat. Why don't you take a glaive today? And I could give you that hardened iron shell. Yeah, take that. Then down here for your accessory, I think for now, I'm going to give you more authority. Here's a clay cup. He's much happier in my faction now. Xu Rong will fight in that battle and hopefully kill many. I'm not going to wait there. We've got two new buildings completed. My income is going up. Ma Ting has a new capital. Gong Du is conquering his lands. Ma Ting, don't worry. I'll come help you out by taking what you have. Luo Yang. It's time to upgrade you. I'll gain a bit more income. It'll take me three turns to upgrade completely. That's fine. I would like to recruit more units too. I think I would like for you to have another commander as well. Jia Shu would be a decent choice, I think. Yeah. Why don't you take Jia Shu? He's a mediator. Plus five to expertise, plus ten to cunning. I'll take him. There we go. Now all of you can guard my pass to the east. To get to Chang'an, they would have to cross right through a very long road. Who's over here? The Han Empire? Ah, Shu Wang. Now I wish I could hire him right now. He's a great commander. I would love to have him here. You want Shu as Nanyang? For now, we have time to continue expanding. It's why I've got to conquer whoever I can as quickly as I can. Han Sui. Didn't want to ally me, which means he's got to die. Kill Let's go into all. combat right now. Our enemies have towers that have got to be destroyed. It won't take long. Once we burn them down, we can begin to move right in. It's another location where I've got to gain more territory. We're playing Dong Zhuo, meaning that I've got to kill so many people. Hunt's way probably feels bad about not allying me now, but he made a very poor choice. He could have been my friend. He could have fought with me side by side, and I would have let him live. I might be cruel, but it's only to display power. If power is not used, it will wither away. These towers are now gone. Now we get to charge right in. Let's go have a look at the situation at hand. It's another town. Where right now, they're defending only one entrance. 
I've got to be mindful because if I charge in at any other location, those towers will rip me apart. I'm just trying to keep them warm right now. Now it's time for my units to move in. It's time for me to charge in and destroy our enemies. You can see over here that my archers did a fantastic job. Very few died. And over here we have our leadership all together, the triumvirate. Lu Bu, Jing Liao. It only grows from there. Now we get to get ready to destroy even more of our enemies. It's going to be a fantastic campaign that will take quite some time. It will require me to conquer my allies and then my enemies. I say my allies, but we're not actually allied, so it's okay if I go after them. Let's get ready now. We're charging in. Our archers are continuing to strike fear into our enemies right now. You can see that we've burned down many barriers in their fortifications, and many of their units have died already. My archers are quite deadly. They're still waiting. Han Sui thought he would be friendly with Hong Zhuo and survive. He was all the way over here in the corner where he would be easily defended by my own units. But I'm not here to defend him. I'm here to take what he has right now. It's time to move into combat. It doesn't really matter who's left. We're going to kill them all. As you can see right now, we have officers who are quite mighty in combat. Many of their own have already fallen, and many more will fall after that. It doesn't matter who they are, they're going to die. My units are now moving in from two different directions. I thought it would be prudent to have my units all move in together, hitting them from multiple areas instead of going from one. I would rather dictate the fight myself than to let them. Sure, they have archers and might get kills because of it. But here I am, pushing in, killing so very many. We can see that my horsemen are moving in from behind right now. They're getting ready to strike whoever might remain. Lu Bu is in the middle, and you know what he's capable of. We made that very clear in the initial battle. Lu Bu is ready to kill so many more. Zhang Liang, he's around here too, also fighting as well. Lu Bu is a threat to everyone. Very few can stand up to him. Lu Bu is someone who's going to lead the way to our victories. If I do not have Lu Bu, sure, I've got a few other talented officers who've got skill, who've got administrative wit, but Lu Bu alone is the one who can kill hundreds on his own. Let him fight. Here comes my horsemen moving in from behind right now. So as you can see, they're completely overwhelmed. What little they did have is currently being overrun. Zhang Liang, Zhu Rong, everyone, they're helping me. And we're winning this fight. You can see that at every single point, they're falling apart. And the battle is now won from my side. Many died today, but despite that, we've gained more wealth than before. Lu Bu continues to strike down dozens of enemies. They should have given up. If they gave up, they could have fought for me, but they chose not to. So now the battle is won. You can see that another location is taking quite a bit of damage, but it belongs to me, Dong Zhuo. Dong Zhuo will continue to conquer in the west, so that one day we may unite the east as well. The Han Dynasty will become the Zhuo Dynasty. We'll see in time. Young Chao would become a king. But the battle is now over. We gained some money and intimidation. They do not have a large population here, but we're still going to loot and occupy. If I try to burn it down by raising it, it'll cost me 4,000 coins to rebuild it. Now my intimidation grows further. Good. Mission issued. As traders fall, Dong Zhuo looks to his own future. Your role is becoming without question, my lord. You are the Emperor's fist, prosecuting his enemies with merciless justice. Yet so long as they remain, there is work left for you to do. 
March out at once and see that they regret the day they ever raised a sword against you. I'm going to reach the faction rank of Grand Master. That will take time. Hunt's Way only owns one more location. The Yellow River is close by, made yellow from the plains upstream and liable to extreme flooding. China's sorrow gave birth to our civilization. Let's repair that silk trader. I have more silk now. I cannot. Oh, what do you have? You're currently replenishing. Good for you. I should be as well. I don't control the capital, so I can't issue anyone on assignment right now. We have a few new buildings. Good. A livestock farm and trade. Not, not trade, but rather jade craftsmen. Appointments have been made. I call Who else can I recruit right now? I think I want more infantry. Let's take two groups of spear guards. There we you go. Grant me a kindness in calling, They'll be with me in one turn. What about diplomacy? Would anyone like a peace treaty? Hans Wei would not like one. We can quickly look and see that no one wants to be my friend. How rude. Maybe that's why Dong Zhuo is so angry. No one wanted to be his friend. I'm kidding. Anyway, let's move on. We're going after Jin Ching. After that, I can move down and either take on Mating or let him live and go after Gong Du. I haven't decided yet. No new missions right now. Oh, Shu Rong is now level 2 or rank 2. What are we going to give him today? Let's see here. Breach would give me plus 1 to available armies, but he would need a very high rank for that. Plus 25% to campaign movement range when he's commanding. Endurance is over here. Fatigue resistance. Now that can be very powerful. His men will not tire out quickly. We'll take that. There we go. He's got a pretty large force now. I am at your disposal. Let's bring out Lu Bu closer to Jin Qing. Sure, it's going to be difficult, but if I take it, I'll be so much more powerful. Now over here, what do I want? I do not want more Xiliang Cav. They're very good, but I want more infantry for right now. It'll make my life easier. Let's take a few Saber Militiamen. There we go. Now we have a full army. And while we have our full army, let's go look at what we can do over here. Farmland still abandoned over in Anding. Jin Ching is quite unhappy. Anding is unhappy too, but that is okay. We can build things up as time goes on. Over here, let's build a farm laborer camp. We'll have more food production. And done. Now we can end our turn again. In a few turns, in about two more turns, I believe, I am we'll be able to make it over here now. to Jin Ching. And finally, take on Han Sui. I would go into a march stance, but I wouldn't be able to replenish if I do so. Yuan Shu has declared war on Hei Yi, or Wei Yi. Seize the future. A scholar joins your faction and asks for an audience with you. Begging no disrespect, he tactfully explains that though his previous lord was lacking in leadership qualities, he was in possession of advancements that have thus far evaded your faction. He suggests that there are many useful reforms available to those brave enough to embrace them, and states that he recognizes this courage in you. You thank him for his counsel, and now consider which ideas to take forward as your own. We've gained a scholar for Dong Zhuo. Interesting. We gain more character experience faction-wide if we give that over to Dong Zhuo, which I would like to do. Jia Xu is now ranked 2. Dong Zhuo is coming back to Chang'an. We have a few new characters in our court, but I'm not worried about that either. Let's go over to characters. Jia Xu, you're now level 2. What am I going to give you? More income from industry. More food production. Now that I like. Lift. Let's give that to Jia Xu now. And for Dong Zhuo, we can give him a new follower. That scholar. It's a fantastic character to have. Okay, go see. Do you have everything that you need right now? You do. Jing Liao and Lu Bu. We're all happy. We're all relatively happy. 
Okay, Liu Bu will be ready to fight another battle in one more turn. We're going to take Jin Qing. Let's keep looking at our commanderies. I could expand my military, but I feel like having three commanders over at Luyang is sufficient. They're very powerful on their own. An Ding, what do you need today? You need a lot. We could sort by income, I suppose. Chang An, why don't you make me more money? We can build a workforce distribution office. We'll do that now. Can I build another building? No, I cannot. Okay. One more turn. We have another battle to fight. Then I'll have more land than ever before. Gong Sun Zan is now fighting Liu Yu. And now we get to fight a battle too. Before I do so, let's have a look over here. There's another leader who would like to join me. I don't want that. But we can go over to my court and see who we have. No one really that notable who I would like to have join me right now. That could change in the future. Everything is going quite well. I'm not having to worry about the East. And I can begin to consolidate my power over here. Meaning that they're going to have a very tough time fighting me whenever they reach me. Okay, let's go over to our commanderies again. On Ding, I know you're not very happy. Let's build for you right now irrigated farms. I want to keep our food up if we're able to. And when it comes to diplomacy, no one would like a peace treaty. Again, as I said before, no one really wants to be my friend right now. But what we can do, we can come back over here and Seize use Liu Bu to fight another battle. And one down. turn away. That's okay. It's still going to be a good battle. Zhang Yan is now fighting the Yellow Turban Rebellion. Good luck, man. The Banquet. You are hosting a lavish feast with many officials present. As the food is brought out, you also have your men drag in the unfortunate entertainment for the evening. An enemy officer, now at your mercy. I am Dong Zhuo. Let's torture them. You made the most of the evening by having their tongue cut out, removing their arms and eyes, and throwing them into a pot of boiling oil. Dear God, Dong Zhuo, calm down. Now, we've got to take a small city. It won't be easy. They have a lot of soldiers. Not only leaders, but a garrison as well. I don't have a trebuchet, and it looks like he is level 3. Mawan is only level 1. We'll have to defeat him quickly and early on if we want to have a good victory. Demand surrender. They won't do it. Continue siege. Why don't I tunnel beneath the wall? Or I can get a battery. I think I'll do that instead. Strike swiftly. There we go. I don't want to spend a lot of time here. I could issue another assignment. Jin Ching again is quite unhappy. I need to take control of her town. Now, Han Zhang, why don't we upgrade you? You'll have a larger garrison, as I said before. Let's gain a Silk Road Caravan Post, giving me a much larger garrison and much more. Let's get ready for our new battle. But before we do that, we need to pick some new technology. What are we going to take up today? More military supplies, another administrative position, more income from the peasantry. There's a lot that could benefit me. We could get another trade agreement. That's handy too, but again, many people do not like me. Let's try to work towards my replenishment. So we're going to take for now military markets. There we go. Now we can begin a new turn. The Battle of Jin Qing. We have fought hard to get this far. It's a stepping stone for all of us here. But once we conquer it, we'll grow in might, we'll grow in stature. Lu Bu, Xu Rong, and of course Zhang Liang. They all will be promoted in time. They will grow in stature and power. You can see that we have broken portions of the walls right over here, though they still have portions of their towers that function. The goal is to break them down. That way they have very little left. They won't be able to resist my assault. No matter what, when you attack a town and they have over 3,000 men to defend, you will lose many. So for now, we continue to strike out. 
we will burn down this tower. Then we may advance. We can see my army right over here. My archers are able to do extensive damage. Sure, a few may die, but many more are there to take their place. We can see more of them in the distance right over here, led by many of my grand commanders. We've got two armies. I've only used one army so far. That may change in the future, but look at them now. Bu Bu, Shurong, Zhong Liang, they're down. all here. They're just waiting for the moment. Let's keep on looking around right now. You can see that we've already ha! broken What's down, again, a grand from? portion of their wall due to my siege engines. But now I've got to move elsewhere. Right now, my archers are moving over here. And my battering ram will move over to this gate as well. The goal is to break down this tower, where we can then advance through another location. As I told you before, we've got to hit so many different areas. We've got various enemies here to fight as well. Han Sui is a grand threat, and we will see him destroyed. We're now fighting Han Sui and Ma Wan. Ma Wan is currently dueling Zhang Liao. I have a feeling that's not going to go the way that Mawan wants it to go. Hans Wei was a military general and a warlord who had granted the three kingdoms, who was depicted as Ma Ting's sworn Unleash brother and a subordinate. Historically, he was a warlord of equal footing to Ma Ting. Hans Wei participated in the Liang Province Rebellion against the Han Dynasty during the rule of Emperor Ling, and he suffered a defeat by the government forces under Dong Zhuo. Despite that, he maintained his territory. Ma Wan was a warrior under Han Sui and would later participate in a rebellion against Cao Cao. Then Wan. It wouldn't work in his favor. Now my forces are moving on. Zhang Liao's already won a battle against Ma Wan. You can see that there's many gaps here, and now we're striking at multiple locations. Let's have a look elsewhere, where we can see that my horsemen are currently moving in. Our goal is to take these towers. Not only to these towers, but encounter any who still tried to intervene and tried to refute my attack. My horsemen are quite mighty. They'll be able to take many locations inside this town of Jin Chin. They still have archers who are alive and wandering around, and a few halberds too. Our goal is to break them down. My archers are currently hitting theirs. All the while, my officers are hitting hard over here on the eastern front, where many have already died. My units are moving in. We may lose many, but we will unite these lands under the rule of Dong Zhuo. You can see already how we're hitting them everywhere. They're losing quite a bit. You want to know where my three officers are at? They're right over here, fighting together. The three of them will strike together. Lu Bu, Zhong Liao, Zhurong have all taken extensive damage, but they continue to fight. You can see over here how we've already broken many foes. We've moved in, and they're falling apart. My horsemen went right after their archers, breaking them. Whatever archers they have will not be here for very long. My horsemen will easily destroy them. If we look at it from a more strategic view, you can see that I've hit them from multiple locations where they're unable to maintain a line of defense. Hun Sui is in the capital, or in the town square, waiting. All the while, my units are hitting over here. Though they fight halberds, they have too many units on their side, and our enemies will fall. If we continue to look around, our officers strike and kill so many more. It won't be much longer now till we destroy their entire garrison. They're breaking, they're falling apart. Han Sui has very little left. You can see him right over here, waiting for his demise. He knows that now he is screwed up. He's all alone. No matter what he does, he will die very soon. Han Sui, you could have made a much better choice if you joined me. But you chose not to, and now you've got to suffer for it. We've already taken the lands over here. These towers are neutralized. My horsemen did a great job. 
we can see that my officers and my main army are continuing to strike through whatever they have left. Lu Bu is killing their archers. Wherever there are archers, I will let Lu Bu strike them down. They can't stop him on their own. They need officers or a much larger army. You can see that a few of my officers have already taken extensive damage. Zhu Rong has done a lot on his own. He's a very brave and valiant warrior. I respect him and I'm glad he's part of my faction. Beyond that, we continue to charge in, killing so many. Hundreds have died today. Thousands have died. And I'm glad that we did it. Though there is a cost of blood, eventually China will prosper because of it. You can see my units now moving in together. Hundreds of warriors now pushing forward. We've captured many, many towers. Han Sui stands alone. Pretty soon he will break. He will lose the will to defend these lands. There's no way he'll fight to the death. I highly doubt he'll choose to. You can see that my units are still pushing in. There's very, very few left. Zhang Diao took a minimal amount of damage. Lu Bu took much more. Now many are breaking. He's still striking down many foes. It's not like Lu Bu, but it doesn't matter. He's still a valiant and grand warrior. I'm glad that we have him on our side and we're not fighting him. One day we'll go against other great warlords like Liu Bei, Sun Jian. Sun Jian, as I said before, or maybe I haven't said before, has not been given enough credit. When it comes to a warrior who gave the fight to Dong Zhuo, it would be Sun Jian and Cao Cao. Cao Cao and Sun Jian were quite active in that coalition. Just because you had members of that coalition doesn't mean they were all fighting equally. Sun Jian fought non-stop. If he didn't die an early death, I fear what would happen in these lands. You can see now that we're striking even more. There are many fleeing. There are few remaining. They've been in disarray for quite some time. Huntway is over here using only one group to defend the town square. He's still alone, and he won't be here for much longer. We've taken everything else, and Lu Bu is moving forward. I fear for his life now. Lu Bu will not allow him to live. I'm sure that very soon he will break. Lu Bu does tire. He is a mortal man. He's currently moving. And now he's made it over to these guards. Who are about to lose many of their number. With every strike, many fall. Hunt's way. Looks a little bit unnerved. I'm sure, after losing many territories and losing his armies, he's feeling rather lonely now. Now they're all fleeing. The battle is over. Look at them. They've broken. Antwe, what about you? What do you want to do today? My units are moving in now. They're riding right in. We've taken his capital. It's over, Han Sui. Long Zhuang's won another major battle. You can see now that he's charging in. Attempting to fight my horsemen. What a poor idea. You can pretend to be brave, Han Sui. But we have more and more moving in. We're currently capturing their city. Destroy them. There are too many around him to let him live. Lu Bu is here as well. That's when you know you're done. Lu Bu's going to break him down. There's no one left but Han Sui. He fights alone. The battle is lost for him. I'm glad he's putting up a valiant attempt, even if it is for a brief moment of time. The enemy general falls! 
Now it's over, and we've won. It didn't take long. Lubu has already slain him. that enemy on its way. The battle is over. One, we lost 820 units and occupied the land of Han's An army cannot survive on faith alone. His entire faction is now gone. This faction is no more leaving one less warrior on the benefit of history. They may be remembered, or their very name may be consigned to oblivion. Oh well. My lord, how can I serve? Yeah, let's repair every location over here. We should do that. Killed in battle, Mawan. He died in that fight. He fled quickly too. He didn't want to stay for very long. Now, Shu Rong and Zhang Diao are friends. Good, they should be. There's more characters who want to join in, but I'm not going to hire any of them. I've got a pretty good court right now, though my income is not very high at the moment. That's okay, really? Welcome, my lord. Your presence in Qing, is in time, hearted. you will be happy. I could go over here to Wu Wei. If I take it, I'll have another location. I would still need to colonize other locations to the east, but let's see here. Why don't I build up my Silk Road trading post? There we are. Now, who could I hire today? No one really. I've we'll got to wait for a little bit, but later I might hire someone just to rebuild a few locations in my lands. I don't want to hire stuff over there for now. It might change in the future. Okay, Lu Bu, you're doing fine. Zhong Liao, you went up to level four. What shall I give you? So let's see here. Bravery, charge, negate. That's really good. Immune to fear and terror. That's really good too. My God. Why don't we, for now, take bravery? That, to me, sounds about right. Okay. So I've conquered more land. I'll probably have someone take over that small town from the Han Empire. Then I'll continue to consolidate more lands over here to the east. But Gongdu is my big target. Ma Ting? I don't know. Maybe we'll kill him too. I haven't decided yet. My replenishment is not very high. But Dong Zhuo, you can help my replenishment grow. Especially while we're here, so I'm going to hire him to do so. Not bad. We've Taken over another location, we have a lot of power, and we have grown in might. Zhang Yan has declared war on Han Fu. Oh well. Liu Yan has declared war on Jia Long. And Dian Chan, the minister Wang Yun invites you for tea at his home. While there, you are charmed by one of his serving girls. Asking her name, Wang Yun says the beautiful woman is called Dian Chan, and it would honor him if you wished to add her to your household. I will kill Wang Yun. Wang Yun offered Diao Chan too readily in response to a simple query. Suspicious that he had some plot of mind, you had him executed. As we will should. Not bad. Let's have a look now. I own a lot more land. My power has grown. Ma Ting is really the only faction that I might keep around. But again, they will not ally me. Maybe Ma Ting needs to go too. Sai Mao, you would like to potentially have me support your independence. No. It's too much for me. I don't want to do that. Let's go look at my commanderies real quick. I can't really build up too much. In Chang'an, I could build up one building for now. Why don't we, for now, take more food production? A farm supply storage is quite good. We'll take that. And over here... Lubu's army is currently replenishing. Will stop I feel the need to go after Ma Ting. I don't hate him, but I want his, la his land. Impossible. That way, I can take over the lands of Gongdu. If I take over everything to the west, I'll be more powerful than ever. Let's do that. So be it. Have fun. A hero's aid. You read a report about one of your generals who beat six enemies single-handedly, largely due to the courage, speed, and loyalty of their horse. Heroes have always had something or someone to help them achieve their rightful destiny. It could be a loyal follower, a trusted steed, a book of wisdom, or a weapon of unique properties, but they all fulfill the same role. Whether it is fate or by your very own will and actions, 
such a thing has come into your possession. The real test is figuring out how best to make use of it, or them, to help achieve your goal. A chance to gain an auxiliary. Okay, sure. Now, Lubu, let's get ready. Ma -ting! We're going after Ma Ting. Even though he is friendly to me, he won't directly help me that much. Gong Du is already beneath him. Hopefully, Gong Du will go out to fight him. If not, we can wait. I've gained a philosopher that would give plus 10 to satisfaction faction wide. Wow, not bad. Well, let's have a look over here. Would anyone like a peace treaty? No one? When it comes to diplomacy, we are quite limited. But that is okay. Say, Mal, I'm not going to help you. That would be weird if I did. Dong Beishan, you're doing fine. That's my wife. Again, you do not like Dong Liao, but that is okay. Lu Bu, you seem like you're quite happy. You're only 37. Zhang Liao, you're 23. You've done a lot. You could be happier. Eventually, I will promote you. Over in my family tree, we're doing fine. Dong Min, you're still my heir, unfortunately. One day, that may change. As you can see, many locations are unhappy with me. In time, they will rebel, but that is okay. When it comes to Chang'an, let's see what we can do. I need a new reform if I want to build up my farm. Yeah, that will take time. I would need to get sharecropping to increase that building. So we'll have to leave it where it's at right now. Outside of Chang'an, no other location wants to upgrade their buildings. Let's build a workforce distrib uh, distribution office. It'll give me more food, more income from peasantry. And that's pretty good. I'll take it. Let's take it right now. And in one more turn, we'll go after Ma Ting. Wang Long has declared war on Sun Tzu. Like I thought, many factions over to the east are now falling to infighting. Good. Let them fight for a time. Zhang Yang has declared war on Zheng Jiang. And we have a child, a new son, Dong Bao. You want life to live. With the coalition formed against you, Yuan Xiao's desire to strike has made him reckless, leaving his family unprotected back in the city. I could kill them, or I could gain more money. I would like to gain more money, so we're going to imprison them. You ordered the capture of his family. Your enemies must learn that none are safe from your long reach. Good. And they're not, too. Gong Du is right over here. Did you beat his army? I have no idea. Oh well. Unding, you're still very unhappy. Why don't we, for now, build up your large town over into a small city? There we go. A character rank gained for Shu Rong. He's now level 3. A few buildings have been completed. Not bad. Now Shu Rong. You're level 3. What do I want to give you? Enable Scare. Scare reduces nearby enemy morale. It's a decent idea. What about over here? Flexibility. We have that. So we'll take Vengeance. It'll give me more instinct. Yeah. And more morale whenever we're fighting in our own territory. He's very happy with my faction. What's over here? All right, I need to give that over to one of my leaders. Let's go over to characters real quick. Dong Zhao, you've got a lot right now. I don't really need to give you too much. What about my wife? My wife could use something. Cunning, sure. But you're not my faction heir, faction leader, or prime minister. Dong Min would take that role. Well, Dong Min, why don't you take my philosopher? Now we have more satisfaction in our ranks. I'll save what I have left. Is there anything else I can build up? No, nothing. Okay, very well. But now it's time for me to go after Ma Ting. We'll be ready in one turn to take their horse pastures. Not bad. 
Zhang Yan has declared war on Zhang Yang. Good luck. Sai Mao has requested their master Li Biao go to war. If you would like to go fight Fu Jian and have fun, I won't be fighting him right now. You've got a rather tiny garrison. Let's delegate and take it over. Sorry, Ma Ting, but you're way too weak to be part of my faction. Not bad again. We've gained more intimidation. Let's loot and occupy. An army cannot survive on faith That's what I do. So now I have another location under my command. We keep on growing. Another command to resecure to Jin Qing. Oath Sworn. Lu Bu and Zhang Liao are now Oath Sworn. They get along much better. There's no one I want to hire right now. We've gained Forged Iron Scale. It provides a few benefits. So now we can go after Gong Du. Gong Du went after Ma Ting. But now I can take everything over here. My goal is to take the Silk Trader, the small town, then the Copper Mine. Later, I'll go after Zhang Lu over here to the east. Let's have a look. The Bandit Queen is not yet going after me. Well, good. And we have a new reform. What am I going to take now? Why don't we work on my extra replenishment? We can go over here to Garrison Conscripts or Retainer Armies. We'll take that. Plus 8 to Satisfaction for Vanguards and plus, well, well not plus, but minus 8% Recruitment cost for melee infantry faction wide. I'll take that. We do have a lot of vanguards. Now we can go to our commanderies. Jin Ching is quite unhappy. Let's repair that one building that we conquered. What's over here? We have a fish trader for more food production. We have over here a dock market for more trade influence, more income from commerce. And over here we have a Silk Road trading post. I could upgrade it. It's an idea. Chang'an, what do you have going on right now, my friend? Well, why don't you build up your stationed garrison into a patrol barracks? Take that for now. I still have a lot more money. Chen Ching, why don't you build up your Silk Road trading post into a Silk Road caravan post? Even more income. We'll take that. Then for diplomacy, let's quickly check at what we can do. Gongdu wants a peace treaty. Adorable. Hanfu wants one as well. Hanfu, I won't be fighting. We can take we that. Approve this. Gongdu, I will be killing. Don't worry about that. Oh no, Gongdu. You're going to die very, very soon. As for my other army, what are you going to do? See, the idea is that you might be better off leaving your allies behind. Sure. Maybe. Or... You could take their land and grow in power. Then you can take out Gong Du. Then focus on only the East. After that, I feel like other factions won't bother me too much. It's largely the Han Empire. Sure, I would like to take them over, but that would take time. Liu Biao, what are you doing right now? You're okay with me. We can see that many factions are quite hateful of me. Again, that's why I'm going after Gong Du. Take over Zhang Lu, Gong Du, Liu Gan, maybe. I would send a secondary army to go fight them. Lu Bu would go to the east instead. Wan Kuang has a large, large army. I refuse. It's quite large. So what we'll do, even though my money is limited, we can recruit return. more units over here. Let's take a light trebuchet. And some archers too. There we go. We have many more units to help out now. That should help me hold the east, even though I'm earning less money. Again, I will be able to hold a location, which is very good. Sao Sao has instigated a proxy war. What a foul fellow. Li Biao has commanded their vassal Wang Zhu to join a war. Zhang Yan has declared war on another faction, a nephew of Guan Shao. A challenge issued. Dong Zhuo rages against the coalition. Treason is cancer, or is a cancer. And we must be the butcher's blade. Every one of those corrupted families, the Sun and the Yuan, must face our blade, make it painful. All must know the price of treachery. He wants me to destroy the Yuan Shao, Yuan Shu, and Sun Jian. 
If I do that, I'll gain a few benefits. Sure. Black Red Crane. This general spots a black and red crane perched on the roof of one of your administrators. The crane screeches at the door four times and flies off to the south. Your general is certain this is a physical form of the Southern Dipper and that the administrator will soon be blessed with a child. Gia Shu is quite happy for at least 10 turns. Nagwo Si and Jia Shu are getting along. Good, good. Let them get along. Who's coming to fight me? That would be Yuan Shu. Yuan Shu is on his way, meaning that we need to Once quickly again, recruit more I units. We can do that. We'll recruit some medium infantry, some medium spear infantry, spear guards. No. What do you have? You don't actually have a lot of horsemen. Never mind. That would be a good idea. If you don't have a lot of horsemen, we can recruit another type of unit. Let it be more halberds. They're cheaper. And over here to the west, we have Gong Du. Gong Du, I would love to kill. He's probably about to run away. He did run away. That's unfortunate. Well, why don't I march and move a little bit closer? Can I do that? Not really that much closer, but we can try. If I can't reach Gong Du, let him take on Ding, the large town. I'll go to Wu Du and take over what I can. Trying to reach Gong Du is always a pain. Wei Yi has formed a coalition with Wang Xiao. Wang Kuang has declared war on Kong Zhao. And we have a new event, Loyal vs. Dutiful. You host two friends for dinner who, between meals, engage in lively discussion about the nature of loyalty. One argues that loyalty to one's lord is the very purpose of life, whilst the other posits that heaven demands our loyalty, and that heaven is above any one man. They talk and you listen. Let's become closer to Guosi. There we go. Now, Gongdu, you've moved away. That's okay. We can move down over here to the Silk Trader. There's a small army out over here led by who? Shu Wei. He's a brewer, too. Oh, hi there, Gongdu. Good to see you close by. I would love to kill you, but I guess we'll see in time. There's a rebellion imminent over in Jinqing. We'll have to worry about that too. My garrison should be decent enough to take them on, but I suppose we'll find out. If I get rid of their taxation, I'd lose some money, but they won't rebel. For now, let's prevent a rebellion. More characters want to join me. Miju could be interesting. He's not a great commander. Later on, he joins Liu Bei. But I kind of want to hire him. I like him. He's a dependable administrator. You know what? Miju, come join me. Why not? He's joined my faction now. Ah, Guan Wenhao. You're very good too. If you're still here in one turn, I'll hire you as well. But you could be a spy. It really depends. We'll have to check that out later when we can. Past loyalties, Dong Zhuo, 186 to now. Interesting. Perceptive, artful, and cowardly. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, well. We'll see what we can do with him in time. That's Li Ru. But what about Miju? Miju is distinguished, scholarly, and a pacifist. Huh. Kind of weird. But I'll let him be a member of my faction. So in a turn, we'll get ready to fight Gong Du. But for now, we're done.